As Singapore's circuit breaker wears on, humans are not the only ones whose lives have been disrupted. They miss interaction because it was always a lot of surprises, a lot of entertainment. Adoption drives would have to be stopped. The dogs would be stuck here. Because the whole medical supply chain is affected, they may not be able to get the drugs they need. With this potential kitchen tsunami, where are they going to go? How will Singapore's army of animal workers ensure that creatures stay well during this pandemic? <laughs> For the first time since opening in 1973, Singapore Zoo is shut to outsiders. Since 7th April, it's been closed to the thousands of people who visit every day. But inside the zoo and its sister parks, 120 workers continue to feed and care for over 15,000 animals who eat through six tons of food a day. One of the zoo's star attractions are their five Asian elephants. The all-female herd is led by matriarch Komali. But today, all attention is on Aprila, one of the two critically endangered Sumatran elephants at the zoo. So we're gonna record the elephant's weight today. Aprila, okay. 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 Udaya Kumar Kaliratnam has been working with these elephants for seven years. Since the circuit breaker started, he's been wearing a mask and gloves. Although it's not clear if COVID-19 can jump between humans and animals, Udaya and his team aren't taking any chances. I remember bringing our elephant to do a thorough check and uh, feed them for the morning. The second elephant looked at me with a varying eye. I didn't know what stopped her that moment until I realized that I was wearing a mask. She didn't know it was me who was standing there. There have been many changes to the elephant's routine. One of the biggest upheavals is the disappearance of their visitors. The elephants have the busiest schedule, I would say, in the zoo. The morning is the first activity. We start around 9.15 a.m. and that is a bath session, followed by two presentations and two token feedings before the CB kick in. So when we don't do that, you can see they are expecting things to happen. These girls have a good memory. They clearly understand that there's a change. Near the zoo is another animal institution that's also suffering from the impact of COVID-19. The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals is Singapore's largest animal welfare charity. They receive over 200 unwanted animals every month, and their work continues even during the circuit breaker. <laughs> Or that maybe because through circuit breaker we can focus more on the patients that we already have. But then as time goes by, it turns out that most of what we do are actually considered essential in the first place. Many of the animals come in with injuries, distressed, or showing severe signs of neglect. SPCA vet Dr. Chow Hao Ting has been working with animals for the last five years. And since the SPCA is wholly dependent on donations, he is thrust into crisis mode. Faced with rising costs and a shrinking budget, Dr. Chow has limited diagnostic blood tests for the month. Any dog, cat, that's not doing so well, we reduce appetite, we have vomiting or diarrhea, that is almost always the first test that we've done. Because the whole medical supply chain is affected, they may not be able to get the drugs they need. You think it's worth it for us to get CAM 15 instead of CAM 10? So it's, what's the price difference? Uh? 100 plus. Okay. 
These higher prices cap off a run of bad luck for the SPCA. Due to the virus outbreak, its biggest annual fundraiser has been cancelled. It would have raised half a million dollars for the veterinary clinic, which covers 80% of its yearly operating costs. Dr. Chow now has to make decisions that no doctor ever wants to make. Most difficult is providing the quality of care required for the patients in the midst of the financial constraints, to be honest. If I only afford 10 blood tests, I need to choose which patient to spend their blood test on. To show up to work and then realizing that actually you cannot help the animal is painful. Ah. Like today, a street cat nicknamed Baby Girl is brought in with a fungal infection that requires immediate attention. Baby girl came with the skin lesion, this big wound on the left cheek. At the beginning, it wasn't so big, but then due to the delay when we were trying to get the appropriate medication, the fungus uh, slowly spread. Uh. While ordinarily baby girl would have started treatments within a month, Dr. Chow estimates that he will need two months to find the right drugs. It was actually quite devastating because day by day, the cat's condition was deteriorating. It's not just emergency treatments for community animals that are affected. Regular sterilization efforts have also been restricted. Independent cat rescuer Nur Samad has been helping to manage the stray cat population by taking unsterilized street cats to be neutered at the vet. Since yesterday, it, it couldn't move, and it's not even eating, so okay. I think it's quite serious. But during the circuit breaker, only authorized contractors, such as the SPCA, can bring in street animals for sterilization. Since the circuit breaker started, I haven't been able to do much rescuing because trap neuter return programs have been disallowed except for animal welfare groups. They can sterilize and do trapping, but it's a case-by-case -case basis. But for myself, I cannot do this anymore. I have a cat right now. Uh, she is on heat. She is screaming away. We have received many phone call inquiries saying the cat on heat and that they have male, female cats in the same house, cannot separate it. You still have to find a way. Over 320 cats are treated under Singapore's stray cat sterilization program every month. But with the program suspended during the circuit breaker, over 600 street cats will remain unneutered. There are an estimated 60,000 street cats in Singapore. Noor fears that a cat population surge is imminent. A cat's gestation is two months. On average, a mother cat can have four kittens. So if you're going to have all these females getting pregnant within the two-month break, if you were to do the math, it would just be it's, it's, it would be scary. Already, there are not enough homes. So now with this potential kitten tsunami, where are they going to go? You can see their, their movement, that they are expecting things to happen. The elephants in the zoo haven't interacted with visitors for the last four weeks. The lack of guests will make them sluggish. One basket you can share with your family members. We bring a big fruit for the visitors to feed the elephant. So they look forward for those. They spend a lot of time work for their food. Guys, sorry guys, sold out. The next one is at 1.30 p.m. Same place, we send 20 more baskets, okay? <laughs> <laughs>
Now with no visitors, zookeepers must work twice as hard to keep the highly social animals entertained. The elephants don't forget. When the elephant ride was suspended um, in back in 2015, these elephants who we used to do the ride with used to stand in the location closer to the gate and uh, waiting for us to take them out. Okay. So what change we made in our team is we did not completely do nothing during the interaction times, just to keep them going and entertain. But again, we are less in manpower. We can't do all five schedules, but we try to do at least three. So when we don't do that, they come to the restroom area where we are stationed and then check whether anything is going to happen for them. Christine Tan is part of a team running Causes for Animals Singapore, an animal adoption centre for homeless dogs and cats. Because of safe distancing measures, the charity has cancelled all adoption drives. We only take in new dogs or cats if the current ones go out to good homes. So if adoption stop, we didn't want to have a full-up facility and then not be able to rescue or help more animals in need. Come, let's go. Good boy. OK. But just as things seem hopeless, help arrived. Fellow volunteer Melody Tan from Hope for Animals put together an idea for an online adoption drive. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our program, Project Adopt Live, Love in the Time of Corona. At that point in time, we're a little sceptical because we always believe in the touch moment where the adopter actually physically interacts with the dog. Anyway, it was held at the shelter and it was a comfort zone for the dogs. So we took that as a blessing in disguise. And this, I believe, is a very, very cute, lovable female dog. Her name is Primrose. Sometimes when we take these dogs out to events, the music will spook them. So what actually was featured on the live stream was a very accurate portrayal of how they actually behave. Dash, four. Oh, you did it! Take that! He is such a sweetheart! To their surprise, over 24,000 people tuned in to the live stream. They found a family for one of the five dogs and gained new supporters. People who couldn't adopt actually went over to our website and started sponsoring the dogs. audience there! Smell! Lots and lots and lots. So it created a bit of exposure for the older residents that have been here quite a bit of time. Look at his doggy eyes. With online adoption drives fast becoming a new trend, independent rescuers like Noor Samad are also going digital. This is Sunny and Dale. They are siblings, two boys, and they were rescued by FPCA and I'm fostering uh, them for FPCA. Noor has been struggling to find new homes for her foster kittens. With a potential rise in new births during the circuit breaker period, she fears the shortage of homes for Singapore street cats could hit crisis levels. Hey everybody, welcome to the first ever live stream adoption drive brought to you by us, Adopt Rescue Kittens and Cats Singapore. We have two of them. Uh, they are siblings. They have been vaccinated and... Um, With the live adoption, we can still continue to talk about our fostered cats and kittens to get them ready for homes as soon as the circuit breaker ends. Clever, clever children. Oh, just got good news that there were at least two people who seemed to be very interested, and I hope that uh, I can proceed with them and answer the, the questions about Sunny and Dale. Today, Christine's teammates Marcus Tan and Kwek Guan Ling is hosting a potential adopter meeting with one of their dogs. He was found by a group of NS men inside their army camp, and they named him Wiseman. So Wiseman is about five to six years old. A, a few of the guys rescued him. They were able to pet him. 
he was able to do some basic commands. Yeah. So what kind of diet does Wise Man follow? Uh, he's eating dry kibbles plus canned food. You can see from his size. <laughs> he's doing quite well, lah, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the team is still looking for a family to adopt Wiseman. But thanks to some tech and quick thinking, they have averted a potential crisis and found homes for nine of the homeless canines. So we are happy because it's actually the normal rate that we have on a monthly basis. You good boy, right? It's yes, you good boy. Over at the SPCA, their situation is worlds apart. Due to a lack of manpower, they've stopped all adoption drives. But with rescues still happening and their shelter filling up, SPCA Executive Director Jaipal Singh Gill has no alternative but to turn to fosterers to give animals a temporary home. It gets a lot more important that these animals are uh, in foster homes so that we do have space uh, at the shelter for animals coming in in very bad shape. Those animals will not be uh, suitable to be placed in a foster home, so we must reserve the space at the SPCA. For we're obviously trying to minimise human uh, contact with new fosterers as well. Some of them may not be as experienced as senior fosterers. Uh, so there's a lot of communication in terms of providing them the support that they require uh, to carry out a successful fostering. Over 120 animals will now spend the circuit breaker period in loving new foster homes. But it's a short-term solution. With the end of the circuit breaker now coming in phases, the challenge animal shelters still face could escalate and pull down everything they've worked so hard to achieve for these animals. What our senior elephant care staff, Sharif, is doing is going to keep cabbages inside here. And we've got a lot of fruits. So they're going to keep whacking the box until all the fruits fall one by one. Sharif is doing a good job. All the work is pretty hard. You guys can see heavy lifting, heavy pulling. It's worth doing because the elephants love to eat this enrichment. It's been seven weeks since the Singapore Zoo closed. Udaya and his fellow zookeepers continue trying to keep the animals entertained. But the elephants are too intelligent to be entertained by the same activity all the time. So their keepers must keep thinking up new activities for them. We have a schedule, so we don't repeat the same thing on the next day. There are certain enrichment which are really exciting, which will take a lot of time, manpower and effort. One such enrichment is taking a lot of logs from a fallen tree, creating a big pile, uh, hide surprise rewards inside them, and then uh, allow the elephants to go, dismantle the entire pile and work through the pile uh, to get the rewards. It takes us close to 45 minutes to arrange everything and they clear it within five minutes. <laughs> uh, maximum 10 minutes they will spend on an enrichment. That is a good time for an enrichment uh, to happen. But again, it takes a lot of effort. Okay. Okay. Good girl. Over at the SPCA, the price of medical supplies continue to concern Dr. Chow. He is turning to his wife and fellow vet, Dr. Vivian Chan, for support. The blood test that I found for Cryptococcus cat, uh, 2013 at the time, is $40, right? But right now, right, it's $100 per blood test. So like, probably we may not be able to test as regularly as they recommend. For him, I don't think it's that simple. You don't really want to watch his birthday. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dr. Chow has finally found affordable medication to treat baby girl's fungal infection. But it comes a month late. Because of the delay, it will take baby girl nine months to recover instead of five. 
Dr. Chow can only administer the medication, send the street cat to foster care, and hope for the best. So this baby girl now, the major wound on the left cheek has significantly reduced in size and we're hoping that in the next few weeks it will reduce even more and eventually might just disappear. First PCA, unfortunately, the question of are we really able to afford this treatment is always weighing on us. Huh? As much as we try to save as many animals as possible, we try to focus on patient at a time. We are now ready to exit the circuit breaker. Many restrictions that are in place will continue. I know Singaporeans have been hoping that they will be able to socialise with their friends, to meet their families. Unfortunately, all of these activities will have to wait. Circuit Breaker might be lifted on 1st June, but many of the restrictions still remain and will remain for at least another four weeks. Life for humans and animals alike will remain uncertain, at least for a while. Currently, our yearly expenditure is about 3 million a year. We are trying to recoup some of the money that we are, we are losing from events through uh, online uh, fundraising. We expect at least for this year, 2020, that we would lose about uh, at least 500,000. Back at Singapore Zoo, the animals and zookeepers don't know when they can start welcoming visitors again. Like zoos around the world, the Singapore Zoo is also thrust into an unprecedented crisis, especially since they rely largely on visitorship for revenue. For our parks, obviously, we're facing a lot of financial difficulty as well, but um, over many years of very carefully operating our organisations, we are nowhere near that bad. From the very beginning, even as early as um, end of January, we have already suspended all unnecessary spending and major cost cutting and re-channeling, refocusing all our budget in necessary stuff like caring for the animals. That is Jati, our 36-year-old girl. And she goes down on the command from the trainer, Sharif. And Sharif is going to ask her to lie down the other side. And uh, once she does that, she's going to get a big reward. What she gets today, a huge, big piece of cabbage. Yeah, good girl. Well done. They love dirt, they love sand, they love rain. They're beautiful as always. <laughs> I love animals. We are the last line of defense for the community animals. No matter how high it is, it is important to make sure that uh, they get the veterinary attention they need. It's really one step at a time, one patient at a time. I think through this circuit breaker incident, we realized that when you feel like there's no way out, then we sort of try to do things a bit differently. Because at the end of the day, if you really want to make something happen, you can. <laughs>